Welcome to the Startup Grind. Good morning. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, thank you for joining us for this fourth and last of the event of the year uh, of Startup Grind. And we are very pleased to be again here at Lux Future Lab. Um, this time we have our host who is uh, ready to ask and to reply to your questions and would like to, to thank our host for hosting us and also for you will see a marvelous reception afterwards. It's a beautiful view. I think it's the best view for the time being uh, and still until the, the work done. So uh, without further ado, I would like to thank Mrs. Shinshin for having accepted, accepted to be among us. And just a small question to start. Could, what, uh, could some of the attendees, they have heard about the Lux Future Lab, but they don't know what it is. In a nutshell, what would you say is the Lux Future Lab? So good evening, everybody, and uh, welcome to uh, our facilities here. Um, we are very happy to have you over here. And before I start maybe uh, explaining what we are, let me just uh, introduce you to the Lux Future Lab manager who's also here, Olivier Selis. Olivier is over there. He will also be available for any questions uh, thereafter. What is the Lux Future Lab? Well, let me start by saying what it's not. We are not an engine to finance startups. Let's be blunt, it's not the idea. The idea is that we would like to impact the social and economic dynamics of Luxembourg by supporting um, two what we think are kind of weak points in Luxembourg, which is education and entrepreneurship. We think that we can do this uh, quite well because on the one side, in terms of education and training, uh, our group is so large in Luxembourg that we host about 11,000 days of training a year for our over 4,000 employees. So we have a lot of interesting training classes. We also think that we have uh, quite some know-how in terms of uh, looking at uh, the economy and um, the small to medium sized enterprises because we still have a market share of 34% within that industry. So starting from these two bases, we saw that there were some skills, there was something we could use within the bank uh, to support this project. This project is a corporate social responsibility project. In 2010, and those of you which are from Luxembourg may remember that uh, 2008 uh, was a very difficult time for BGL coming um, out of the Fortis um, whole uh, problems, um, the financial crisis started. So in 2010, our CEO of that time, um, Eric Martin, asked me to set up a corporate social responsibility department. Obviously, uh, as always, we're saying you cannot touch anything, like uh, the whole programs which we had since always, the bank was supporting culture, social issues, uh, the Philharmonie, the Red Cross, as well as Village d'Enfants, so all those programs were continued, and I was not given any additional budgets. So um, I called in a think tank uh, made up of colleagues from the various entities of the group and I said, what can we do as a major group considering that we have to face a credibility gap uh, with our clients and, um, and, and institutions? And on the other side that our clients also nowadays have developed new needs and new interests. And so we were identifying at the end of this round table, we had identified that there were two areas which we wanted to work on and which I just mentioned, which are education and entrepreneurship. How were we going to go about that without, as I said, uh, any budget? So 
At the same time, we were working on studies on um, social enterprises. And so we went to see the Grameen Creative Lab in, I think, in Düsseldorf, in Germany. And we were saying, what, how can we go about this? And we, so then we came up with the idea of the Future Lab, which has two platforms, an entrepreneurial platform and a training platform. On the entrepreneurial platform, we have the incubator. And on the training platform, we address um, our main client's needs in terms of training. And uh, our main clients, our target groups are three. They are students. Once they, at the end of their high school studies, so between 16 and 18, when they're supposed to choose their career. And there we have a summer school where the theme is, in Luxembourg, you can be something else than a public servant, a banker, or a consultant. So I guess many people here are concerned. So we have the summer school uh, two weeks a year for the 16 to 18 years uh, students. Then we have a whole program for our startuppers they can access the catalog of trainings of the bank. I just mentioned it is important. Also, we organize dedicated trainings here at lunchtime on how to handle your IP, how to handle uh, labor questions for startups, accounting questions for startups, and so on. So it depends. And we also work, uh, Olivier works closely with the university. So um, there too, we. Uh, hosted last year marketing class together with the university. And then the last program we have on the training platform is a program for um, professionals who have already started a professional career as an employee of a big group, but who always had like kind of the idea saying, I have a brilliant idea and I would, which I would like at some point to, to really implement. You know, 30, 40 years old, which say, me too, I want to become an entrepreneur. But the problem for uh, those people is always that they have a family, have taken out loans, and what do I know, other constraints. And so it's uh, difficult for them at a certain point to say, I start from scratch. And this entrepreneurship program, if you're interested, I can say a few words later on, is designed to accompany them over a year and helping them set up their own company. So the future lab is, as I mentioned, two platforms, one for training and one for um, startups. Thank you. And I guess what is also interesting to know is if I have a project or I'm an entrepreneur or would like to start, how can I get in touch to touch with Lux Future Lab in order to get, come into the benefits of the advantages. What is the way to do it? Well, the typical way is to go on our internet site, which is actually being redone now, uh, Olivier, uh, or contact Olivier. Uh, we ask uh, people to fill out an application form. They will have a first meeting with Olivier. And uh, once he thinks that it's uh, within the scope of the future lab, then we will organize an acceptance committee, which usually uh, includes at least one specialist in the area of, uh, of uh, specialization of the startup. We have a number of criteria if you want to apply to the future lab, which are the degree of innovation of your idea, and the uh, job creation potential of your company. Remember, I said this is a CSR project, so uh, we really want our startups to be contributing to the economy, to, be, to have this positive impact, which we're looking for. And we also want to be innovative. So uh, if you're just if you're a consultant tired of corporate life and say, I will set myself up and I will be a consultant in what do I know, you're not, you will not be accepted. So uh, innovativeness of the idea, job creation, the third criteria is 
you cannot be in competition with any member in the future lab. And this is simply because uh, we want the future lab to be a dynamic uh, environment which creates synergies and we don't want to deal with people's problems, uh, you know, uh, trying to steal each other's ideas. Olivier is the only man on board, so it would be difficult for him to handle all that. And there is a fourth criteria, and that is uh, sharing and participating in the things we do. Uh, so uh, I'm very happy I see uh, some of our startups here. Thank you for attending the Markets Trust. So uh, we have job shadowing days with students. Uh, we had this morning, for example, we had uh, a delegation from the Ministry of the Economy coming in. We were asked some of the startups then to come and present themselves and participate in what we do. And I must say this works extremely well and um, it's really fun to work with them. So once this application is done, which shouldn't take that much time, uh, you can move in. And the conditions are very easy. Uh, we ask for a very low rent. We actually can say it. We ask for 25 euros per square meter, which is indeed very quite low for Luxembourg because it applies to your actually occupied space and not the common space. It includes also maintenance, so it is, uh, let's say, a very good offer. And um, we supply also a number of services. And how the services, I mean, uh, you explained that you had a think tank in the beginning where the idea came out and then the concept you developed a little bit further and then Lux Future Lab uh, was formed, let's call it like that. Did the, from the idea you had, to today, have there been already a, a lot of some adaptations in the, uh, uh, in the concept of the Luxuture? Or would you say, ah, it's fine as we thought it out in the beginning? Um, the only adaptation I can see so far is more a constraint which we have due to the fact that we don't have a lot of uh, human resources. So at the beginning, we had conceived the lab to have a part uh, which had an open space for co-working and then individual offices for companies which are already incorporated. So actually, um, we are not enough to really uh, uh, support a co-working uh, space uh, or people who are, who are only brainstorming. So for that we recommend usually people to join the factory which is more a co-working space. The companies which join us usually have a business plan which has been worked out, they have already their proof of concept, they are already incorporated. So that part of our initial plan, the co-working space, is something which we uh, more or less abandoned. But for the other things, uh, we have maintained our services are still the same, so we provide training, we provide coaching, uh, we provide networking, uh, all these things that we maintain. And the companies who have benefited from these services, are there some services they would say, ah, these have been very important to us, these have been also important but uh, to a lower impact or does it vary from company to company? Well, I think it varies from company uh, to company. There are also services which we really uh, want to build on. Remember, we are startup ourselves, so uh, we develop also our offer constantly. For example, one of our objectives now is much more to do the uh, to link much more with uh, with the group because we have the enormous advantage of this huge uh, group behind us. Um, the group has incubators, for example, in countries like Turkey, we have a major incubator. We also have, will now set up incubators in Belgium, in France. We have in Paris, uh, really already since the times of the Minitel, uh, a technology watch company, which is also, which is in Paris, but also based in California, San Francisco, and in, um, 
in Shanghai. And one of our objectives is uh, to have a real service level agreement with them for our startups in terms of technology watch. And that is something which could be really interesting uh, but which we need to develop more. So some of our companies already went to see them and could benefit from them, but it's something which we really want to develop much more. And did you also have in mind, I mean, you had some nice successes over the period that you uh, exist, and did you also have in mind how to exit those companies and to say, okay, when they leave you or was that already predefined, or is that something which you left open-ended? No, it was really open-ended. Uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, this is not a typical project for a bank. So at the beginning, when we came with this idea to our board, they said, oh my god, what is this crazy idea? You know, so we had to convince them and tell them, listen, this building is empty, uh, this is our project, let us test it. So they gave us like a six months period where we, they said, you can do it, but don't put the name of the bank under it, please. Uh, now they changed a little bit their idea on this issue. Uh, so that uh, was very much at uh, the beginning. Uh, now, as I said, the attitudes changed. And from what you have witnessed so far, uh, are there things you, which you have, would have done a little bit differently? Regarding the project of the Lux Future Lab, or in the, what you have done with, uh, or witnessed, or experienced with the projects which are in the uh, Lux Future Lab? It's a little bit too early to say. I think it's a little bit too early to say because it's really still only uh, it's still developing. As I said, uh, maybe I would have focused the project a little bit more without a co working space, uh, all of this. But um, no, I think actually it worked out fine. I also must say we have an excellent, excellent working relationship with the other incubators. So uh, it's really an ecosystem which is very tightly linked. So if we see a startup, we will ask the colleagues from the other incubators uh, have you seen them? What do you think? Uh, or if we had a startup the other day, Olivier told me he had a startup which was more on the creative uh, side, where he immediately sent it to CAS, CAS 35. Or if we see a startup which needs much more support than what we can provide in terms of uh, brainstorming, we will send it to the impactory. Um, or if we see people come who are already much more advanced and who need really more support uh, going from local to global, we will talk to uh, the accelerator of PwC. So we really work together. We also have created among us a think tank and we have convinced the government to give us an internet site where, which we want to develop so that when startups come to Luxembourg, uh, one of the problems I had at the beginning was this multitude of people there. There's Lux Innovation and Business Initiative and Ade Trago and uh, there's so many you don't really know where to go to. So we saw that it would be really useful to have uh, an internet site where the startup could go to and say, so we have developed, it's quite easy, it says, what do I have? an idea, a business plan, proof of concept, am I already structured? And on the other side, what do I need? And then according to your needs, the actors will show up behind. So that is the kind of site which we would like to develop. But again, as I said, we want to do this together. So if I have one regret is that we have not yet more advanced in that, but it's a little bit uh, a question of time and uh, resources. And on the other hand, coming back to this ecosystem, the, were you surprised that the other actors were so reactive? Or uh, would you say in the beginning that you were a little bit more reluctant to go into this ecosystem? 
Yeah, they were a little bit more reluctant meeting us because at the beginning <coughs> they said, oh my God, there's this bank coming. <laughs> and that was a bit a problem and that's why I also always very much insist saying that this is a CSR initiative. And I actually would, uh, and we are, we are thinking about eventually structuring it as a foundation or something like this, really to preserve a certain kind of neutrality uh, towards the bank. Uh, I can tell you one thing is that the vast majority, the vast majority of the members of the future that bank with another bank. So that's to tell you how little we influence. So they, uh, we are very much at a distance to that. But there is one thing I regret, I must say, and I think that is something which we will see coming is that the banking industry, we notice it now as a future lab, is not at all um, trained to deal with startups. Uh, and they have started, actually our group has started in France, they set up now 17 Pôle d'Innovation, where they took a relationship manager and an analyst, and they trained them in at least understanding disruptive technologies, what is it, how do I approach a business plan? Uh, what can I ask from a startup company? How do I handle it? And that is something which we uh, hope very much that we will also have in Luxembourg uh, with our bank, but also with other banks, that we will have people who understand better on the banking side the needs of startups. And if you come back again to the beginning, I mean, you identified or you were aware that to start a project or a company, there are some challenges for the person who is doing, undertaking the venture. And would you till now say that you under-evaluated the challenges or that the companies you were, that you were lucky with the companies which came to the Lux Future Lab, that they uh, overcome those challenges uh, faster or better than you expected? Well, first of all, I'm extremely happy with the companies we have. We now have 17 companies um, from 11 nations. So we have American companies, uh, Indian companies, we have an Israeli company, an Italian company, uh, um, Canadian company. What else do we have? Well, from an American company, I mentioned it. Uh, so what we have seen is uh, initially we saw mostly uh, companies from, the, from Luxembourg and the greater region. And now we see companies, the last companies we came indeed were uh, companies from far away. So that has changed, which is uh, very interesting. The companies we have, um, we had three to four companies which left us because either they changed their idea, they moved away from their initial idea, or they didn't get the funding, I must say. The ones which stayed, uh, most of them performed extremely well. I can say all of those who joined us last year, most of them, have really come from two to three um, people, and now they are 15, 18, one is already nearly 30, so they're really, really um, uh, working very well. Um, the type of companies has, well, we always had a broad approach, unlike the technical which is really on ITC, we always said we uh, accept a broader range of companies. So we have companies which are in electronic money, in social media, in IT, in uh, medical um, projects, in media and communication, in games. So um, it's uh, quite broad and that has also this the diversity also has increased, so the nationality, the diversity has increased. Um, we also see now some companies coming to Luxembourg which are already a little bit more mature, which is also interesting to see. So 
the environment is really changing. I must say it has accelerated and in the last seven to eight months we've seen more companies than before. It's really going really fast. Uh, Olivier, you see uh, what about two, three companies uh, a week? Yes, um, around uh, yeah, between seven and ten companies a month. So, uh, and we're observing these, uh, these last, uh, last weeks. And as Karen said, people from uh, everywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. That has changed a lot, yes. And what would be, the, what are the short term plans for Lux Future Lab now? <laughs> We have one major short-term plan, and that is moving everybody to the other side of the street. Because this building, unfortunately, uh, will be sold. And so we have to move. And in the meantime, uh, we, uh, I think the bank is so convinced of the project that they uh, accepted to, um, to give us those three old villas. Uh, you see outside of the casino, uh, outside there is the casino, and to the right side there, three old villas. So the future lab will move over there in January, and that is a major, major uh, project because just uh, already uh, renovating it and then um, yeah, convincing the startups not to take that office, but that one because this company already wanted it. So uh, it's a, a big thing about offices and space and how to allocate space. Thank you. Are there maybe some questions so far? If you find a paper in Luxembourg, I'd like to take risks and it's too comfortable here to yes. Um, succeed. Maybe. Yes. Yes, well, that has, but that's nothing new. Huh? Uh, Luxembourgers were always um, very, uh, in a certain way, low profile, risk adverse, uh, calm. Uh, liking security uh, people, that has not changed and that is, I think, a problem in tomorrow's economy and that's a little bit also the whole focus of the uh, summer school is trying to tell their kids we don't want to know what your father is and we don't want to know what your teacher is telling you we want to know what you're interested in and you can be whatever you want really, you simply have to be the best and the whole summer school is about this, pushing them to, s to find out what they like and pushing them, tell them, you know, do it, simply do it, you can. We had the summer, for example, with some a coding class at the beginning in typical Luxembourg Street, they said, but we have never done this. And we said, well, we don't care, but by the end of these two weeks, you will have a product which you will have marketed to the community. And, um, we had really two fun guys from MIT helping us do this. And by the end of the two weeks, we had a fundraising site, um, two fundraising sites, one for the uh, animal shelter. They had raised over a thousand euros, the kids. We had a game, which was really well done. We had uh, the YouTube. So they had really succeeded in two days and they realized suddenly that they could do something, and that is a little bit, you know, what we are lacking. And what we also find is that people nowadays stay too long in studies. They come out at age 25, at the earliest, now in Luxembourg, they go to university at age 19 or 20. Then they come back, Luxembourg to Luxembourg, sometime 25, and say, where can I now find a safe space? And that's the problem. Other questions? Uh, yes, please. Uh, why would a uh, company in Turkey or the US choose Luxembourg to start its business? Well, um, <coughs> the American company we have, uh, if I may say so, they came uh, following the whole new legislation in terms of information communication on the funds industry. And they, um, just after arriving here, they actually conclude the joint venture with uh, Kneipp Communications. And I may say they came so because uh, 
they uh, like the Luxembourgish laws about uh, a certain uh, privacy. They closed all their accounts in the States. And they came to Luxembourg because they figured that uh, first they wanted to be in the European fund industry and because also we had laws which were clear. We had excellent data centers. That was also one reason and that is why they came. Maybe you want to say why you chose Luxembourg. Yes. Yes. Uh, uh, it's one of our startups, the Markets Trust. Uh, uh, yes, we, we choose Luxembourg because uh, due to the central uh, location, I think it was uh, quite uh, easy because our market was uh, financial industry. And also at the startup, when we, we were thinking uh, that we made our business case was either going to, to Germany or Luxembourg, we found it that uh, Luxembourg offered that uh, for startup, the, the Starting uh, the life cycle was very well defined uh, from, uh, from the beginning compared to the other environment. So they give us more uh, structure. So personally, I started from uh, Technopore and going through all the, the cycle. And after, because uh, we, we were a financial also company, came up to the Sotola, where uh, in our special case, uh, the Sotola also give us an advantage to be the expert, uh, call it a domain expert from the, from, from the banking. This is the most valuable uh, that we may, may receive because we, we are able to talk to very high uh, expert, high specialist directly. And uh, in agile mode, so we are able to, to customize uh, when we have an ID. If the ID is really physical and we get the real feedback. So our, Thank you. So that is really one of the reasons what we see with most startups. It's still the central location. They find an international platform. So they find developers. Um, for example, uh, if, if whether you have now a, a product addressing the German or the French market, you can easily do it from here. That's very easy. We have a French startup which joined us in the uh, electronic wallet side because um, in Luxembourg we translated much more quickly the European directive on electronic money than the French did. Um, others come because we have excellent data centers. Uh, the Indian company which came, uh, we asked them uh, with Olivier, why the hell do you come here? India, you know, uh, or London, why would you want to come here? And they said, well, just as you said, we can move faster. We are more centrally located and things go faster. If we need access to, um, to the ministry or to some skills or something, everything goes much faster. And speed is of the essence for startups. So. Yes. Okay. Um, another question? Yes. Uh, you have been at both incubators because I was just wondering you know, how, why the why the structure was different from Technopol. So you have also been at Technopol, you see? Yes. So could you just explain why you were at first Technopol and okay, you know, what is the difference? I think uh, for the inception phase, uh, the, the Technopol, they, uh, they, they offer the, this co working space. Is that? Like Kevin mentioned that uh, the co-working space here is something, I would say, the less, less supported. So Technopol yes. support us more for the, for, from the inception days. So we validate uh, the business of our concept. This, and, and after the Technopol said, which I said here also, uh, the Diego said, okay, it's better for, for, for the next, uh, once you have first round in of the funding. It could not help us too much, so we need to, to find out ourselves to come back more because we are financial. I think it was more rational for us to come back to, to the next. Uh, to our next level. That is really 
if you see uh, the ecosystem, it's to that we did a slide on this, it really shows we are very complementary. Uh, indeed, Technopore starts, uh, the impactory, you would have first the impactory on, on the brainstorming. Then Technopore already takes startups at the level of the co-working and the finalizing, they really help you support setting up the business plan and all of this. Future Lab, as I said, mostly has already incorporated startups. And then later on, the accelerator of PW picks up at the level when you take growth from local to global. So it's, uh, it's actually quite a well-balanced um, ecosystem. Some of the startups also want to come here because, uh, for example, Trendiction. Trendiction also was initially at the at Technopore, and then they wanted to come here because um, the facilities at Technopore were too open for their developers. They needed really much more privacy, much more closed uh, environment. They also, most of their developers come from Germany. It was much easier to access. Uh, it was easier for their client base. So those are considerations which you may, might have for being here or being at the Technoform. But as I said, there is never a competition between us because we consult with Diego whenever we have a company and we make sure that um, it is uh, in agreement. On the other hand, uh if a company comes or a project comes, I mean, they get the services from one or the other, yes. and from the outside, I mean, I mean, witnessed myself, they they always say the missing link is the finances. Yes. And uh, for example, do you also assist if you have a project who applies here, comes with the idea, develops the idea, in order to you said uh, uh, one or two projects didn't find the funding. Uh, for example, like business angels or other ways, do you, not assisting them, but uh, let's say prepare them to approach potential investors? Yes, uh, we do uh, normally one pitching day a year where we also have an incubator from Paris coming uh, from the NUMA, Le Camping. And then we also, other Luxembourg or regional um, startups can pitch. We also work together very closely with the LVM, Luxembourg Business Angels Network. Um, we try to invite to these events, obviously, uh, investors. And you asked previously what are some of your projects. One of our projects is also to identify uh, better uh, resources which we could find in that area within the group. For example, in France they launched now one highly interesting project, I think, for startups. It's called Innov and Connect. What they did is they, um, they, um, they took some of their major corporates looking at their needs in terms of technology developments. And then they were looking if they could find in the market startups working in that area. And then they were linking up with them, accompanying the startups so that they could really you know, deliver the services which the large corporate would, uh, would require. And that is also one of the things which we really hope with Olivier to develop over the coming years is using better the resources of this group, which has huge corporates, which has highly interesting corporates, which also has interesting family offices, which could be interested in investing in uh, startups because it's an investment in the real economy, because it's a diversification of their portfolio, and there are very good reasons uh, for this. And all of this potential, let's say, has not really been tapped. In order to close the, uh, the questions or the discussion, uh, the standard question from uh, first Tuesday days or startup grind days is you know, approaching Christmas, even the weather is not like Christmas, but you see that Christmas decoration is coming up. If you could write a letter to Santa Claus, what would be on the list for Lux Future? More budget. <laughs> <laughs> so that's really on the point. 
So uh, I would like to thank you for having answered our questions. And if there are further questions, uh, of course, we were, you are able to ask them when we now go up. It's not an elevator, we take an elevator, but it's not an elevator pitch. So uh, we are happy that today Luxuture Lab is hosting the networking reception and it's upstairs, at the, as I said, that would be a very beautiful uh, last floor of uh, the building, as long as we are, uh, you are still here. And uh, I hope you will enjoy the view. Thank you very much. <laughs>